Hey, 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 everybody. Hope everyone is doing good. What is it, Thursday? Thursday night? I'm losing track of the days. Um, full disclosure, I know we always joke about my internet, but this is not a joke. Uh, my internet literally went down for two hours this morning. We usually have it like flicker in and out, but this morning it actually went out for a solid two hours. It, it snowed here in the Raleigh area and it snows like once a year. So if everything just goes black and the whole thing shuts down, it's probably that. So I just want to go ahead and put that out there for everybody that's listening. I'm, I'm putting it out there so there aren't any surprises but I haven't had any issues with it since, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon. So hopefully we're all good. Tonight, I'm excited. I've got my buddy Brad, the Comeback Card Investor. He is back on again. We're just going to kind of catch up. I haven't really, I mean, I text with him all the time, but haven't done a live with him in probably a month or, or more. So I wanted to catch up with him, see what he's up to, uh, see how everything is going in, in L.A. He's eating a lot of cake from what I can see on his lives. So I'm a little concerned about that, but. Let's go ahead and bring on Brad. What an introduction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I eat a lot. This guy eats a lot of cake yeah. and he I lives mean, in Los Angeles. Let's bring him on. Yeah. How's the insulin going with the type two diabetes that you picked up dude. over the last few months? <laughs> dude, it, it's, uh, you know, here's the thing. LA has just lifted their, uh, their really strict protocols with COVID. So gyms are allowed to be open outdoors. So I just uh, started working out at Gold's Gym because they moved all their equipment outdoors. So I at least have three workouts under my belt. So now I could actually eat the cake and at least burn like a fifth of the calories ahead of time. So I feel a bit better about that. Um, but excited to talk to you. Excited to not just text our, our inappropriate text, but actually get on here. And I see uh, David Hunter, Grungeman17, Ed Lang, Hockey Hockey 99 He's been really kind to me. Um, <laughs> Will. So uh, it'll be a good time, man. There's a lot going on in the hobby. I see a lot of conversation about UFC as well. So um, wherever this wants to go, uh, the conversation with you, man, I'm down. Yeah. Juice, oh my gosh, this guy, I have to pull it up. Juice Weasel, yes. <laughs> that was a great <laughs> skit. Yeah, I don't, yeah, we just became best friends. You don't even know it. That is the, what my best, in li like that's one of the best in living color skits of all time. I literally send that to my brother like every other week. Yeah, you know, just for, for fun. It never gets old. That was uh, a Jim Carrey, right? Yeah, yeah. Jim Carrey. Have you seen you've seen him on In Living Color, right? I, and well, the thing is, I think that's a bit before my time. Uh, I was a kid in the 90s, so I don't know if I was old enough to watch that, but I think either you sent it to me or someone else sent me that skit. Dude, go so just go onto YouTube and just go like in Living Color, Jim Carrey, and just go through all of it. It is so funny. Fire Marshal Bill. Uh, Fire Marshal Bill, he does all sorts of crazy characters. I'll, I'll send you some of the stuff. Okay. I can't, man, I can't believe it. It's like my wife's never seen Star Wars before. Like, my wife was born and raised in Italy. So, literally, like, we got Disney Plus and we put on, like, Disney movies for, for the kids. She has not seen these movies in English since she was a kid. So, we'll oh. watch, like, Sleeping Beauty and she's like, oh, that's what they were talking about. You know, I mean, she's, been in, the crazy. States. she's been in the States since she was 15. So, I mean... She mm. speaks English and everything, but she hasn't been. She hasn't watched those Disney movies, so it's funny. We we, we watched like The Little Mermaid. She had not seen any of that in English at all. She was blown away. Like, oh, I thought it was going in a totally different direction. I had no idea what they were talking about when I was a kid. So, are you watching these movies because you're doing everything '90s again because of sports cards, or is this because of your kids, or what? Because like, I yeah. feel like more '90s stuff is coming into my life, but it's it's the doors being open from sports cards. And that's what I was telling you before with my next or an upcoming video where a lot of TV shows and movies I'm starting to tap into because I think I'm tapping into my 12 year old kid brain that just wants yeah. to do everything I did when I was tw like 10 to 12 years old and everything in the 90s when things just seemed like a lot I don't know, more fun and colorful and yeah, and less crazy. I'm all over that. I mean, I talk a lot about on my show, just 80s, 90s nostalgia. I mean, mm. I talk a lot about cards because I'm heavy into cards, but. I'm all about anything that's 80s, 90s, nostalgia related. I like talking about it. So, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you there. So are, are you going to change your name to Collecting Dustin? <laughs> Collecting Dustin? Because I'm going vintage. I think it's funny too. Brad. So Brad was texting me about like my vintage buys. And what he means by vintage buys are like 88 Fleer basketball, which to me, that's not like those aren't vintage cards. You know, I mean, like vintage cards. I know if you're not buying like modern, ultra modern, then those, I guess, are vintage for some people. But 
you know, those are it's all relative. It's all relative. Sure. You ask a hundred year old collector what's vintage. He's not going to say like 65, whatever, you know what I mean? In 20 years, you're going to be like, hey, I'm flipping John ja Morantz. And they'll be like, Who? what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? I remember this guy. Total bust. <laughs> Great rookie year. Total bust. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let's kind of, all right. So we'll take it one kind of one piece at a time. And I'm sure the audience probably has figured that we don't have any sort of a game plan here. We're just kind of shooting, <laughs> shooting from the cup, like normal. Yeah. Um, so what have you been like? Okay. So Jan let's talk just January because we've mm -hmm. been texting, but we haven't talked. So what's been kind of your, you know, your focus on in January, have you kind of, you know, coming out of 2020, I know you're big on kind of new year's resolutions what how is that tied into your card buying and what direction have you been going in over the last few weeks okay so uh yeah my big goal for 2021 was to take this full time and it was because i pretty much spent 40 hours plus a week researching and doing this and youtube as well last year but a lot of times it was just lower end cards because i was still afraid to drop big money on cards because you know, when you get into this for the first time since you were 12 years old and a $10 card was like the most you could afford, the idea of dropping a thousand dollars on a card seems absurd. And, uh, you know, when I would do this with lower end cards last year, I would still use the same approach, which is, I think it's low. I think there's room for it to go up. There's a heavier chance it goes up than down or a bigger chance it goes up than down based on my, my theories. And then I just pull the trigger there. And so this year I was like, all right, I just got to go heavy. And the only sport that I'm really seeing opportunity with it and starting to at least is football. And that's because I was buying well, and baseball as well, but I was buying baseball in November. I was like, all right, this looks really cheap. Let me buy baseball. Um, I bought soccer cards back in November when it was really cheap then as well. But now the only sport I see has a lot of low prices is football. And that just makes sense because we're really far away from the next season. But I kind of like the idea of just if I could buy off season and see where the prices go in preseason, I might be able to liquidate at a profit I'm happy with before they can tear an ACL or or do something stupid and get in a fight with a teammate in practice and then get kicked off or or something like that. So I'm all about minimizing risk and I wouldn't mind just doing this and whatever I can't sell for 50% or 2x return holding it throughout the year and hoping they don't you know, break a leg or or do something stupid or, or just suck. Uh, but that's where I've been right now. But I've been dropping a lot of money. So, I mean, we're, we're talking like <laughs> I think it's in January. Um, I know at least like seven or eight thousand, but maybe ten thousand. <laughs> but I've also been selling, man. I've been selling like crazy on Comp C. Yeah, I was going to ask you because I know that, you know, historically, since I've known you, you know, you're kind of it's more of short term flips. It's, you know, you're kind of playing the off seasons, which is really smart because, you know, it's, it's like a perfect kind of thing that always seems to happen. You know, the attention goes away during the off season. It's good buying time. You're leading up to the next season. It's a good selling time. And we haven't really seen that really change. I mean, even, you know, as 2020 has been kind of peaks and valleys, a lot of peaks, um, you know, that still has, has held true. Have you had do you have other cards where you're like, you know what, this is more of like a one year hold or a two year hold, you know, maybe a little bit longer than kind of that 90 days, oh, months, you know, moving the capital around? Yeah, yeah, I think what I really like is I want cards that have the chance to go up to the profit I want in three months. But if it doesn't, there's a chance it'll be there in six months. And if that doesn't work out, then in a year's time, as long as the market is, you know, roughly where it's at right now, hopefully bigger, but at least it's uh, somewhere where it's at or, or similar to right now, I'll be okay. So I'm, I'm not big on, um, on the rookies or speculating. I like to, I like it to be a couple of years in <coughs> damn little, I need my giant jug of water. There we yeah, go. Let's get some water. <clears throat> Airball. I had this, um, this new seasoning from Trader Joe's where it's like a bunch of chopped up nuts. And so <laughs> It's like a seasoning for vegetables, but it's just chopped up nuts that you throw on your vegetables. So now I got like a little almond sliver in my throat. Um, but I, I like the idea like um, last year I was really big on Russell Wilson. And so I was buying his cards raw uh, before the season started. But I wish I would have bought his his PSA 10s of Chrome and Prism because I was like, you know, what, Russell Wilson, he has the upside short term, but 
if all goes to hell, he's still going to be the starting quarterback. I mean, it's like he's good enough to the point where he could have one bad year and still be a starting QB for the Seahawks or someone else. So I, I like the idea of I want someone that has the three month window, the six month window, the year window, and then maybe even longer. But I, I think because I love the fluidity, um, <laughs> I love the fluidity of cards. I don't like holding on for so long because to me, it's fun uh, trading and, and you know making money here, rolling it over. To me, that's more of the the stimulation that I'm looking for. Yeah. What about you? Sense. Yeah, I mean, I've done a little bit of all of it, really, where it's like I've got kind of my short term kind of flip stuff. And then I've also got more of that that middle ground where maybe it's like six to 12 months. And then I've got stuff that that I'm planning on on holding, you know, for for a while. You know, I mean, I we've talked about it. I've talked about it on my show the last month. I've been heavily, heavily into 80s basketball. Mm. Um, I'm even I'm thinking about like selling off a lot and put and just going straight into 80s basketball. Most of it, not all of it. Um, and it's not my first foray into 80s basketball. I already had a fair amount, but I just kept on like I, I'm just looking at it. If you and just looking at the pop reports for for a lot of that stuff and just analyzing prices. And there was definitely some opportunities. Yeah, Jeff, I know. And I think that, Jeff, you actually brought this up in a live stream maybe a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. And I didn't buy it at that point. And now I just bought a PSA 8 for one hundred and fifty dollars because those PSA 9s, I'm assuming you're, you're talking about the nine went from 300 now it's like 450 500 bucks and i think it's moving moving up and the 10s are just outside of my my price range hmm. yeah Did it's we got three thumbs down already that has to be a mistake well, well sorry i gotta apologize because i'm pretty sure that's me <laughs> that's not you <laughs> what the uh, oh you brought the haters All right, Brian, <laughs> I, I think so i think it tends to happen but by the All way right. uh if anyone was on my channel earlier i had a fake account i don't know if I you saw same, it i had the same exact thing Oh, I, I thought it was special. You I had saw a, the community post thing, and then I, I had the exact same weasel on my in my comments. Not the juice yeah, weasel. Not the juice. I wish, honestly, if it was the juice weasel, I would just let it stay there. <laughs> well, you know, juice weasel. I saw your comment where instead of collecting Dustin, his suggestion was dust in the wind, which I think is great too. I don't like how all of it has to do with my demise. It feels like, you know, like, <laughs> well, dust is not really like, well, yeah. dust isn't really like a, Hey, I'm going to make it in the world type of, you know, uh, now. And it's like, dust is usually like, all right, you've kind of like disappeared. You've been disintegrated and now you're just dust. <laughs> hey, we're all dust in the wind. I think it was Nick that put that in another, another comment. D your thoughts on your saints, possibly trading for Deshaun Watson. Um, I hope, I hope they I trade hope for Deshaun Watson. If they, you know what? I hope that the Saints do a like Mike Ditka 1998 draft, whatever draft that was, where he traded the entire draft for Ricky Williams. If he did that and they got Deshaun Watson, be perfectly fine with it. Perfectly fine with it. And I, I hope to God for the Bucks' sake that they don't. <laughs> I want them to stick with Jameis Winston or Taysom yeah. Hill or Drew Brees, or, you know, whatever else. But that would it's be horrible for the got, NFC South if you, Deshaun you got, Watson comes. I mean, you've got a few guys in play like that. You've got, I mean, where's, you know, Carson Wentz going to play? Where's... Um, what about Matt Stafford? Matt Stafford. If, if, Matt if Stafford Drew Brees re retires, do you think the Saints get Matt Stafford? As just like a, hey, we got someone for the next probably two to three years. I guess it's just going to depend on their valuation of him because I think that he's pretty good. He's also fairly injury prone, but he hasn't played it behind the best offensive line. And the Saints have a great line. So mm -hmm. I feel like Stafford would have more success with us, but I don't, you know, what, and then what's the payout? What, what do we have to give up for him? You know, mm -hmm. do we have to give up a first rounder, a couple first rounders? Like, I don't know if, but the one thing I did see though, is the Lions were not getting the, the trade interest that they thought they were going to get for him. So maybe it is something where the Saints give up a second or something. I don't know, a third or, you know, and, and they get a, a fairly good deal on him. I, I don't know. I wouldn't mind having Stafford. I think Stafford is, is mm. you know, I think he's Better. a good quarterback. On he's our, not bad. I mean, we have a good overall team. We just need someone to kind of, you know, lead the way. And Breeze, Breeze has been good, but over the last couple of years, he's regressed. He's just, he's mm. regressed over the last couple of years. So we'll well, I mean, I, I would say Matt Stafford would be a step up from Breeze. And a step and like just above uh, Winston as well, because Winston has an arm, but he just throws to the wrong team half the time. So 
Um, yeah, I guess it depends on how stacked the rest of the Saints are. But, I mean, with the offensive line, yeah. you have Michael Thomas, you have all the others. Yeah, she's talking about the Sports Illustrated. Uh, Sports Illustrated. I think it was Sports Illustrated did like a, a cover with Mike Ditka and Ricky Williams, and they're in like a wedding dress and all that. I, th I think I remember that too. Yeah, it's a funny, funny wow. one. Johnny Football. Where's Johnny Manziel? Get him mm. in here. I see the uh, uh, Shelly put the Falcons need Watson. In terms of buying his cards, though, when I see how much his cards have gone up, I just. It always makes me think, could it go up much more because how much of that price hike uh, is that, you know, how much of the expectation of him leaving is baked into those prices, right? No, I think that you nailed it. I mean, I think a lot of people are already anticipating Deshaun Watson going to the Patriots. I mean, mm. if, if Cam Newton's rookie cards can go through the roof by him going to the Patriots, think about Deshaun Watson going to the Patriots where he's already. Who do the Patriots have to trade? Like I, Tom Brady wasn't good there because the receivers sucked. Uh, everyone else has sucked with well, the four receivers. Draft Just capital. The next three first rounders. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they could pull. I mean, Billichek's the Sith Lord. He'll find a way. It's the power All right. of the NFL. As right. long as he's out of the NFC South. What's <laughs> up, Chris? I was so happy to see Brady come to our division. That was awesome. See, I mean, I think it's exciting because you get to play two games a year against a great quarterback. But, you know, like this year has been so amazing for the Bucs. I'm like, just I, I want the competition just to be a bit weaker in the NFC South, just for a couple of years, just until Brady's gone. Bucks win one or two rings and then the next team will take it from there. Well, you might have that because the Saints are not – they're going to have to – they're going to lose a lot of guys this offseason because we just can't pay everybody. We've got cap problems. Mm. Uh, we're going to have a different quarterback, most likely. And even Bre Breeze, even if he comes back, he's not the same guy as he was five years ago. So, yeah, well, and then the Falcons and the Panthers are not dominant. So, I mean, if, if, Brady, if Brady comes back, I think they'll be they'll probably be all right. See, I, I'd be really curious as to what Drew Brees' rookie card prices are now, because I think a lot of people are expecting him to retire, which should plummet the price. But what if – well, for one, Drew Brees needs to be on the Tom Brady's TB12 plan because Tom and his company, like with all the, the stretching and the eating healthy and all that stuff, he's on point. But what if Drew Brees decides to come back and actually looks pretty good in the first couple of games? Like, you know, he has arm strength back and, and stuff like that. Uh, I would just be curious to see how far down Drew Brees' cards have gone right now, just based on the assumptions that it's over, he's washed up, it's time to retire. I have a couple of Breeze rookie card autos, actually, and I just got good deals. Uh, of Steve, uh, Flipping Steve gave me a good deal on one that he had picked up. I don't have a bunch, but when he retires, when Breeze retires, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go after some of his. I'll probably try to get his um, that refractor rookie. He's got like mm. a tops. I think it's a tops Chrome refractor or it's, it's the 2000 Bowman Chrome. Okay. I'd have to check it out. Okay. Maybe it's Bowman. It's either the, it's, it's the kind of it's, he's like throwing in a chargers uniform. It's, it's his most like base. Mm. I mean, he's got a bunch of rookies, but it's a refractor right now in a PSA nine. I think they're like three or $4,000. I don't know if I'm going to get one of those. This guy is my spirit animal, juice weasel, Bobby a bear. Coming out of retirement, that's an old Saints quarterback, Brad. I don't think you would have remembered. Okay, that. yeah, I, I didn't know that one. We just became best friends, me and the Juice Weasel. Uh, I did say, hey, Chris, how's it going, bud? Good to see you. Chris was the guy that we can dig into this a little bit, but Chris introduced me to Top Shot, NBA Top Shot. Mm. He yeah. introduced me too. So uh, props to Vegas Fine 777. Chris, he introduced me too uh, months ago, and he's like, hey, man, Dude, check it out. I can get you in if you're interested. And I passed just because I didn't understand it. But congrats to him and anyone else that uh, is having fun and making money in it. It's new and exciting. I don't think anyone knows where it's going or, or what's mm. up and what's down, but it's fun. It is a, It mm. has been fun. Um, maybe we can get into that a little bit later if we have some time. Bruce DeGreen, you want to buy low, right? Watson being a hot topic and trader is actually a good buying window, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean... There's just so much excitement kind of swirl. And I think he just announced today or yesterday that he had demanded a trade officially. So, you know, he's on the move. He's going somewhere and yeah. wherever he goes, there's going to be excitement with that fan base or whatever. You know, there's going to be some excitement around that wherever he goes. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I saw something here. Dexflow put, I don't know if you saw this text or, or this Instagram post with Vegas Dave uh, throwing the hobby under the bus, something to do with, he thinks it's a bubble. I haven't seen it, so I don't know if uh, you saw it or have yeah, any. Uh, I, 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 I kind of want to address that because I, here's the thing. And I, I think that we're all very measured on our channels when we talk about sports cards. You know, I don't, between, you know, I watch your channel and my channel. I'm very kind of open about cards go up, cards go down. You know, it's not going to go up forever type thing. But I kind of feel like people, they, they have to make these declarations so that they can be right down the road. Because the reality is just like with every single market, there will be a slide at some point and it might last for a couple of weeks. It might last for a couple of years. So it's kind of just, I, I feel it's kind of annoying to be honest, because it's like, you're just trying to be right that there's going to be a, you know, there's going to be a downslide, which of course there is. There's going to be, there's downsides with real estate. There's downsides with the stock market. There's downsides with any sort of market. So it's just kind of like, I don't know. I, I just I just gloss over it. I feel like people are just trying to get attention. And it's no different when somebody says we're only in the, you know, the first inning and, and we're going to, you know, everything's going to keep on skyrocketing. I have the same attitude towards that as as if as when I hear everything's going to crash and, and cards are going to be worth pennies, you know, next year. I just I don't it's like I just feel like it's kind of just been overdone. Uh, I haven't seen the post, but I mean, and I'm not even talking about that particular post, but I see it all the time. I see it in the comments. I see it in, in, uh, by, by other, you know, YouTube channels. And it's just kind of like, if you're playing on the extremes, I feel like it's just kind of obvious news that there's going to be kind of, there's going to be spikes. There's going to be dips. That's how this works. Yeah. I, I haven't seen the post. I think it's just a matter of, I, 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 I try and look at everyone uh, everyone's posts, everyone's thoughts and ideas, and just like everything's with a grain of salt, like everything. And you know, when people watch my stuff, hopefully it's with a grain of salt of like, this is what I'm seeing, interpreting, sharing. And I don't know if it's right or not, because no one knows the future. It's just kind of like, right. well, this has happened in the past. Here's <laughs> one point. Uh, and then someone else brings up another point, like a different factor that I didn't in include or, or know about. And I don't know. I think it's one of those things where we've seen where the last year was, there's ups and downs, there's, there's seasons. And, you know, everything is, when I look at the data, I'm like, okay, I feel a lot more confident going in the direction of certain investments because I, I don't have to guess the future as much. I just have to look at the past and ask myself what could be different going forward than what it was in the past. Um, I'm optimistic though. I, I still think, man, of all the investment styles, all the different hobbies and things to take our money and, and use it and whatever, this is definitely the most fun. You know, like if it didn't have a fun factor, I'd be a lot more worried. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of money being printed. And so I would imagine a lot of factors are leading towards the, the market staying where it's at or very similar. Um, but who knows, man? I have no idea. I agree with you, Will. I guess my my thing is, Will saying it's healthy. It's called the wall of worry. I'm with you, man. Like I am a very measured when I'm buying cards. I'm very, you know, I, I take into a, account a lot of different factors. We talk about it. Mm. I guess my thing is, is just when I see kind of extremes on both sides, I get, I get, it's just, I don't like it when I hear that this is going to go up forever. And I don't like hearing like the world is coming to an end and everything is going to crash. Something, you know, in between there, I'm totally fine with. I'm totally fine with the worry. I'm totally fine mm. with the I, 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 Hey, I've got, my youngest has autism. Like I'm, I'm a, a wall of worry all the time. So I get it, you know, but I also just kind of think it's got to be measured to some degree. And I feel well, like some people just kind of get in there and just, you know, it's like, they just have to, you know, they just want to throw that in. And it's like, maybe that's just not, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I, it's interesting too, because I know Vegas Dave did a, a break with cards and coffee and all that. So part of me wonders, okay, if you are, if you believe it's uh, gonna burst, I, I, cause I don't know the post, so I don't know exactly what he was saying, but I would imagine Essentially, there's a lot of people that he's, he has partnerships a, with that like are into cards. Three years, there's gonna be a big crash to that effect. Say that one more time. Like in the next 12, he said like tw 12 to, or 24 to 36 months, there's gonna be a big crash. All right, that's vague as hell. Like not, not Vegas state, like vague yeah. as hell. That is like, okay. I thought it was like, all right, in the next month or two or something very short term where it's like, all right, that's a specific uh, prediction. The next couple of years, next year or two. OK, well, based on its growth right now. Yeah, I could definitely see that. And there's a lot of things in society, vacations becoming a thing again and whatever else. Um, 
but I, I think that's also why when I make my investments, I don't ever buy at the highest price ever. I like buying when there's a proven high price and then it goes down to what I think is a, a very safe low price. And when I'm in that spot, I feel like, okay, as long as the market doesn't crash and that player doesn't you know, break their leg or do something really stupid in the off season or during the season, I should at least be able to get out at this price because I'm really trying to get in towards that bottom point. And I don't, and because of that bit of worry, I don't mind investing four months, six months out. I'd rather do that than buy at a pretty high price, hoping it goes higher. And, you know, in the middle of the season and, you know, ACL tear or something like that. And then all of a sudden it's down. So I'm, I'm conservative in that way where I won't even touch a, a price that's near the top. And you actually nailed it, D's Vintage, where it's like, it's really no different with the stock market. When stocks crash, that's a great buying opportunity. Buy. Oh, I yeah. Know, I, I mean, yeah, of course it's going to stink, but I'm that that's when we're in buying. If, if vintage basketball, if, if vintage basketball crashes, I'm going, all, I'm pushing all the chips into yeah. it. You, know well, I mean? yeah. Yeah. you remember back in November, it was back in November, I, we were messaging and I was showing you, I, I think we were both talking about it, the 2012 Anthony Davis Prism PSA 10. You remember that? Like I was showing the charts and it had gone down to $1,200. And we're like, oh my God, is the, the sports yeah. card bubble over? Basketball's over. And you know, this card was thirty three hundred dollars in August, and it was twelve hundred dollars after. And, and I think you said like, if it hits a thousand, I'd I'd go in or or something like that, right? I was gonna buy one if it hit a thousand bucks. And and in full disclosure, the most I've ever spent on one card is six hundred and fifty dollars. That's the most I've ever spent on one card. But but just like what you were saying, if that hit a thousand, I feel comfortable enough that I can get my money yeah. back. And what's crazy is that I was not at the point where I felt comfortable enough or confident enough dropping that amount of money on a card because I'm still like, when I was 12 years old, a $20 card is a holy grail card. And now people are throwing around $500 cards like nothing. And so uh, I remember seeing that and regretting it now because if you looked at Anthony Davis prices up until a couple of weeks ago, I remember seeing one that was like 26, 2700. I'm like, Man, it just it rebounded. Holiday spending, stimulus checks, NBA season, whatever, and it just goes up. And I was like, "Damn, it's kind of like sec." You know, we don't want to second guess ourselves sometimes because it's like it makes sense to us because we study the data, we we try and make sense of things. And when it it lines up like that, and you go, "How in the world is this card a third of the price after winning the championship?" At, you know, it's like I, I would have pulled the trigger. So that's what I'm doing now with football, thinking like. I'm going to assume the same thing is going to apply because sports might not be as predictable, but human behavior, I think, is a lot more predictable. Yeah, you're right. And it's proven to be, I mean, it has that 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 off-season strategy that you deploy. It just seems to stick. You know, I mean, it just seems to to stay consistent where our hobby isn't always consistent as far as pricing, but but that definitely has. That definitely has. Uh, yeah. Michael Ham, how you doing, man? What's up? Go Bucks. There was also, I think I saw Flip and Steve in here. Flip and Steve there. Yeah. How's going, man? Yeah. Steve had one of those ADs. I was asking him if he was going to sell at a thousand because I was going to be the buyer for it. And he was like, hey. Would you like to take a huge loss on your card? <laughs> <laughs> because if so, yeah. I can how help you out. You, how desperate are you for cash, Steve? Because I'll take that off your hands. All right. I like your recent play on the Clay Thompson Prisms, Brad. Good call. Worst case scenario, is still a three time champ. Yeah, Clay yeah. Thompson was a guy that I I bought some of his stuff in the off season. Not not a, a rookie card of his, um, but kind of thinking that the Warriors are going to come back, you know, come back strong. I bought a lot of Steph stuff too for that reason, mm -hmm. um, and then unfortunately it didn't happen. But that is true. The guy's already accomplished. Yeah, you, what's interesting is that I bought Clay after his prices plummeted from the second injury, and his off season injury is perhaps the only exception to buying off season where it's usually when they're playing the games like you know against other teams during the year that's when injuries occur but you, once in a while you do get one of those freak injuries off season so i mean there's no uh perfect time to buy but i'd rather minimize my risk so so the thought process behind the the clay thompsons were for six hundred dollars a piece i'm like six hundred is not bad maybe he's not the same but i don't know what the hype is going to be like because the hype a lot of times sells the cards versus uh, the merit versus actually how they perform. So if the hype takes his cards up to a thousand dollars, 
before his return next season, then that's a great opportunity. Uh, I I don't know what the influence is going to be with Space Jam, if how big of a movie that's going to be. If because um, I'd imagine the original Space Jam will be aired a lot on TV, and then you have the theaters might be open in July, like around the country. Um, so I don't know, but Clay Thompson, Anthony Davis, Damian Lillard, LeBron obviously is the main guy. I just don't know how big of a deal that's going to be if they're going to be Space Jam cards this go around like they there were in the 90s for the original. I don't know, but I, I see it as like, okay, it's it's an option. It's an option. Maybe he has a like a great line in there. Maybe he's the funniest one. Maybe whatever. Or maybe he sucks and people are talking about him sucking, but that brings attention to his card prices for next year. Um, but it, it's one of those things where I'm like, if it's at this price right now, there's several reasons why it could go up. And I don't see many reasons why it can go down unless he gets injured for a third time or if the whole market just crashes. Yeah, I meant to ask you too. I I typically I haven't gone down the grading. You know, I buy raw, sell raw, buy graded, sell graded, but I have not gone, you know, down the path of submitting to PSA and the BGS, et cetera. You have done that. You've bought raw, you've submitted, you've also bought graded, you've kind of done it all, all different ways. What have you been doing the last few weeks? Have you been buying more stuff that's already graded, or are you buying raw to grade, or are you buying raw to flip raw? How are you or, or are you doing a lot of like star stock com C stuff? Yeah, I got, I'm selling a ton on Comp C. And what I'm doing now is I'm thinking of buying a lot of uh, football on Comp C because that's where I'm finding a lot of deals, sending those rookie cards over to Star Stock and seeing how they perform. And also because I have like $2,500 in Comp C that I can continue to invest. But I, at a point, I just want to take it out, but I don't want to get hit with that 10% fee because that's 250 bucks down the drain for nothing. So, um, whatever deals I find on Comp C, I'll, I'll get because I just love that type of platform. I like being able to sift through and, and see what looks good. But uh, lots of graded cards, lots of graded. I think I bought like 50 or 60 cards. I bought four or five Dwayne Haskins Prism PSA 10s before the Steelers picked them up. And I sold one because I bought it was like $35 for a 10. So I was like, this is my high risk. Odds are he's going to be back on some team in some capacity because he's a first round pick and, he, and he's new. He's not like three years ago, first round pick. It's like, all right, you still have, uh, you know, we'll give you another shot somewhere else. And Washington is just one of those franchises that just seems to like always screw up. And like, uh, you know, like it's one of those teams where you think of like, I don't know, I don't want to say Cincinnati, but I mean, like Cincinnati, Jacksonville, Washington, you, the Jets, New York. It's like there's something going on there. And maybe Houston as well, where players just never do well. Like I think Oakland used to be the same way. And uh, I'm like, all right, maybe someone else picks them up. And then I sold one for, I think, 90 to $95, bought for 35 Not big, but I'm like, hey, I like seeing that upside because as long as uh, Dwayne Haskins doesn't re uh, retire, announce his retirement, the odds are someone will take a chance on him. And just that news, that little headline will be enough to double the price. And that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Dwayne Haskins is an interesting one. That's definitely a quick flipper. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. As soon yeah, as yeah. Not like he's not like he's great. Just like, okay, if you can be a backup somewhere, even if it's third string, I mean, hopefully second string, because then second string can actually go into a game at one point, but at $35 for a 10, you know, it's like, how much does it cost? It's going to cost like 15 or 16 bucks to actually get it graded. And it might not come back at 10. So might as well grab a few. Now, you've also been doing some baseball stuff, right? I think yeah. that you talked about that. I've, I've, I just don't know enough about outside of kind of the, the Sotos, the Acunas, the, the Tatis, kind of the obvious guys, which I, I haven't, I just don't buy baseball, but I wouldn't even know where to start really. Um, you know, what kind of you, you've been doing research on kind of the, the price points moving up and down. How much are you in on, on baseball? Um, not too much dollar wise. I think maybe uh, eight, ten, um, like a thousand to twelve hundred bucks. Like not much, but this was back in November when football was hot and cold because you're in the middle of the season. So you have some players going up, some players going down. Basketball was heating up because we're getting closer to the NBA season. And I'm just watching baseball just plummet because the season's over and no one cares about baseball at this point. And I'm like, well, I don't want to buy something that's already you know halfway to its peak. I'd rather buy something at the absolute bottom and then just 
do this cycle all over the year. So I might as well learn about baseball because I don't want to just have that opportunity pass me by. And so uh, Mike Trout was the first one because I'm like, hey, even I know who Mike Trout is. He hits home runs. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame, blah, blah, blah. I don't have to know much. So if I see his price is really low, I know that that is one of those. If it doesn't pan out in three months and maybe in six months, if not in six months, maybe in a year, if not in a year, maybe in two years or three years. And so I bought a couple of trouts, but I wish I bought way more, to be honest, um, back in November. And then I bought Aaron Judge. And the, the theory behind Aaron Judge was plays for the Yankees, hits home runs. Uh, Yankees were ranked really high to win the World Series. So I, I'm like going by all the metrics that make sense to me without actually watching the game. So I'm just saying, like, what can I piece together that would stack the odds in my favor. I'm like, well, if the team should do really well, that's one thing. If he has the highest jersey sales, then I know he's popular. If he uh, hits home runs, that's better than a defensive guy. Uh, if he plays for New York, which is the media capital of the, U the United States, then that's another upside. And his cards were like $80, $70 for his PSA 10 Topps Chrome rookie. So I'm like, all right, I'm comfortable with all that. I don't know if it's going to work, but I like the idea of – if I buy at this pe uh, period in time when baseball prices are rock bottom, I don't have to be right on everything. Hopefully, I'm just right on enough for it to go up in price. So even if I'm wrong, I can get out and break even or make some profit. Uh, but I, I like that. You know, I like buying cards all the time. So I, I want to be able to sell and then move it on to something else and think three months and six months ahead. So uh, we'll see where the card prices go before opening day. But that's the theory. Yeah, I think with Judge, it's just all about staying on the field. So that, that he's just he's injury prone, but he is a massive home run hitter. So it's like if he can just stay, I think that happened last season. Um, I, I was watching another uh, YouTube station where they were talking about he he had a big string of games, you know, a couple mm -hmm. weeks, and his his cards shot up. It's just kind of a volatile, you know, game. But that's that's kind of exactly where you want to be, though. I, you know, I kind of like it. Yeah, I, I kind of like the volatility because. I think volatility is fun when you're buying low. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you if the chart is crazy high, crazy low, then that's the best way to make a profit because as long as you're the one buying at that low. Like uh and one example was Damian Lillard last season, right? He went off on a tear for three games straight. I think it was like 62 points, 50 and 60 and you're like, "Holy yeah. crap. I think streaky players can be some of the best short-term investments because they've got to have the wildest charts like ideally i want a basketball player to have fifth like three 50 point games in a row that is the best you buy them like when they haven't had that in a while and they have three games and then you sell it and then people are like but where's the fourth where's the fifth like well i mean you took the chance you thought there's gonna be a fourth i might sell after the first one thinking like he's not gonna have a second but then maybe as a second maybe as a third um, but I, I like the volatility because sometimes you get burned. Sometimes you, you, you're, you know, you buy too late and too high and other times you don't. But I think that's fun. Yeah, it's like with Zion, you know, too, to some degree. Zion's such kind of a polarizing figure as far as that goes to where he's, you know, he's hot and cold with the hobby and his prices go up and down. His prices haven't gone way, way down, though. It's not like, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, they've, they've crashed or anything. But I have. I don't own a lot of Zion. I think I've got three of his cards, but it's just in part kind of like what we're talking about. When when there is kind of a exciting spike, then I'll probably you know sell them. I think the, the thing with Zion is that I don't have many of his cards because they never go low to the point where I feel like yeah. this is a buy there's low. No, there's no bargain basement Zion cards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw some cards go down around October, November. That was the lowest, but it was not to the point where I'd say this is great. The only upside with Zion is that he's such a media magnet and there's so much hype around him is that it'd be easy to sell. But if you can't buy that low, then what's the point? Yeah, I agree. There is a little bit of a debate in the chat about Bo Jackson or Deion Sanders being the best two-sport athlete. Bo, I, my mm -hmm. vote is for Bo Jackson. I think he was the – the thing that's crazy too is like – you had literally like Deion Sanders, an amazing athlete. You had Bo Jackson. You had Barry Sanders. I what mean, did Barry had, play? Did he play baseball? No, no. I, yeah, Barry wasn't a two-sport athlete, but I'm just talking about just athletes in general. Oh, you hmm. know, in the in the 80s, the late 80s, early 90s, just like insane. 
you know, um, it's funny how they can just do that. Like, oh, wait, wait, you know, I got, I got a baseball game. I got to, I can't make it to practice today. It's like, wait, this isn't high school. <laughs> you can't just do that. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing how, well, I saw a documentary, I think, where Dion would like finish his game, then get on a plane and head up, head to Atlanta for, for the football game. I mean, it was like crazy his schedule. Mm. That he was on. I, I like Dion. I mean, I, I, I don't, I wasn't around for Bo, so, or I didn't really watch. I, was that 80s? He was a rookie in 88. I don't know why I'm because I because Dion was what like 89 or 90? 89. 89. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why. Um, but he was baseball and football. Cause I'm like, I know nothing yeah. about Bo Jackson for some reason. And I know yeah. a lot about Dion. And I just wonder why that is. Um, but yeah, I grew up with Dion. He was, he was a personality, too. Well, and Bo Jackson, so if you don't know much about him, he injured his hip. He had a career-ending hip injury to where he was only in the league for, like, what, three or four years. Mm. But while he was there, he just did amazing stuff. He just got a freak hip injury that ended his career. But, yeah, he played for the Royals. There is mm. – I put this up. There is a highlight of him that's awesome. He, he runs back, catches a ball at the wall, and then runs up the wall. Um, baseball, obviously. But yeah. makes the catch and then like runs up the wall and runs back down. It is it's insane. Yeah, if you want, if you're just bored, watch Bo Jackson highlights because it'll just it'll blow your mind. All right. Yeah, definitely watch those. All right. Um, talk to me a little bit. Let's shift gears into YouTube land. Um, how are things going for you? Kind of starting off 2021. I know that you've got you know you've got goals and so forth. Anything that's new or different or, you know, anything with the channel that's that's notable that should be talked about Man. Fun with it. I, I mean, dude, yeah, it's fun. Uh, it, it's obviously both of our channels and a lot of others, Vegas finds and others are, are growing. So there's a lot of interest. It just makes it fun when we could chat. Right. Like talking about cards. I think I told uh, Jeremy this from Sports Card Live. Talking about cards to me is more fun than having cards. Right. Because the card doesn't talk back like part of it. You know, I'm like, hey, Brad. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, my wife just came downstairs. I was going to see if she could jump on here real quick and say hi. Okay. She's, yeah. Come over here. Jump in here real fast. Say hello. We still I like the turn. Hello. How are you? YouTube says hi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were still on, babe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 108 people just uh, saw you. <laughs> oh, what's that they want her back in and dustin you can take the night off she's like i'm trying to go back i know yeah and i'm done tag team you're in now um but, but back to youtube um i don't know man just things are great uh oh dude i got hacked for the first time you said that that happened like not hacked but uh, a fake account so if you guys were on my recent video Someone was commenting, um, you know, like, I believe Bitcoin is the best thing in the world and it's the future. In fact, talk to my Forex lady. Here's her number. So, yeah. Yeah. If y'all ever see anything like that from either Dustin or myself or anyone, uh, just click on that that link to see if it's actually us. But more than likely, it's just spam. And maybe I will actually comment just to mess with people. I'll actually be me a couple times. But uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to comment and Brad's like, Talk to Brad about Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. What? No, the creepy part though is, is they took our like they take your logo. Yeah, they actually yeah. So that well, that's what makes it confusing. So that's why, guys, if you're ever on one of our channels, uh, Chris as well, it's probably going to happen to uh, Flip and Steve and Vegas Finds. Uh, they might take your logo and have the same name and just say something like Bitcoin is great and use some broken English to to piece it together. But uh, just watch out. Don't don't call the number. Yeah, don't. Yeah, definitely don't. Oh, I have to say hi to uh, Jeremy. Just popped in. Jeremy. Oh, nice. Live. What's up, Jeremy? Kyle. Uh, it is a, a comment here. Uh, yeah, I see petite Persian perspective. Yeah, I take it as flattering. Like people are actually like, "Oh my God, you got hacked or someone imitated your account." This is a good thing. Yeah. And then Kyle Trems, but uh, I don't think I can uh, see it at six forty four or nine forty four your time. Uh, Brad, thanks for selling me the. <laughs> Where is it? Brad, thanks for selling me all that Bitcoin today. Well, if you actually bought it, I hope it goes up, <laughs> whoever that is. Hey, great news, guys. We got uh, our identity stolen today. We're moving, <laughs> yeah. moving on up. That, well, that was my YouTube goal for 2021. Get to the point at which my identity is looking to get stolen. 
Yeah, I saw this thing on on Twitter. I think Doggy Coin or something. Now that's a, that's new dogs crypto or what? There's a, yeah, it's a. I think it's a it's a dog coin thing. I don't know. I really don't know what it is, but I feel like I should buy some. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, when you have the word dog in it, it just seems more trustworthy and likable. So, <laughs> I mean, if you have like kitty cat coin, it's like, well, of course, yeah, I, I want to buy that. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to sift through these comments here. There's a, a lot going on in the chat. Mm. Dustin only says hi to his YouTube channel friends. Are we all chopped liver here? Hockey, hockey. I said hi to you first when when you were in. I said hi to hockey, hockey. Brad, <laughs> Brad I don't think you did. On his channel, he only says hi to the people that send him twenty dollars on the super <laughs> chat. <laughs> hey, I've lowered that to fifteen. Okay. <laughs> Dude, oh, yeah. I, all right. Stop. I own zero GameStop. I feel like I really missed out on that. Well, well I, I think it's really interesting because I didn't know anything about this GameStop thing until I saw an article talking about how a group of people on Reddit just decided, hey, we're going to screw over Wall Street or, or like take it to Wall Street by doing this. Do you have any uh, any thoughts on that? I don't I don't know. I mean, I think it's I think it's kind of a good thing. I don't know. I, I don't really know. Um, I, I honestly just don't know enough about buying and selling stocks to really get it, I think. Um, how about well, you? I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, they shorted GameStop, to my knowledge. They shorted GameStop, which just means they are betting that GameStop will go down in value to make their money. And then I, I don't know who heard about this or discovered it, but then all these people on a Reddit said, screw you, we're going to buy up the, the, the stock. And I, I didn't really have a thought as much uh, as the stock and what's going on, but I thought it was really uh, surprising the power of people in a community to band together and yeah. do whatever, right? Do It doesn't matter what, just do something. And the fact that they're putting their real money on the line towards this, I thought was pretty impressive. Uh, just that, you know, a Reddit string can be that powerful because I always thought of it like eh, it's whatever forum people don't really do things together. They don't know each other. And the fact that they could actually make such a big impact, uh, I thought it was impressive. And it also makes me think, well, damn, maybe as a YouTube uh, community, we can do some pretty big things, whether it's in this niche or something else, just because what's the difference? It's just a group of people talking about something and then, uh, you know, going with it. Yeah, it's it's. It shows you definitely the, the the way the world is changing as far as social media goes. I guess you could probably lump in Reddit into just social media, online forum, you know, whatever. But yeah, it just shows you how times are changing. And, you know, whether it be people buying collectibles or retail investors or whatever, there seems to be kind of a pushback on the establishment, whatever mm. that is. Mm. You know, the, the old guard. There seems to be kind of a, you know, a, I mean, I... I don't want to call it an uprising because that's not what it really is, but it's like, you know, it's, it's just changing. There's just, you know, times are changing. It seems like. Uh, I'll see. Yeah, I know for sure. I'll see. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. <laughs> Sam Darnold. Right, we're we're going to take this one step further. Screw the GameStop. This is going to be the Sam Darnold pump yeah, and dump. We're all, we're all in. And then so Rudy's going to buy a hundred Sam Darnold rookie cards. Nobody else is going to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> but when you go to dump, I'll, I'll, I'll pay a, a fraction of what you paid, Rudy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's not going to work with us. Like, I don't think we have enough. <laughs> it, it, the, the article would be like, like a, a fail article. Like they tried to do this on GameStop and just completely whiffed. Yeah. The subscriber count went down 95% because, uh, <laughs> it didn't work out as planned. <laughs> oh man! All right, what else do we have? Um, um, I, I saw a few people asking about if I'm buying Bucks cards. I would love to pick up some uh, Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski in a Bucks uniform card, but I'll wait till uh, the off season or early next year. Um, but I can't wait. That's going to be personal. Anything Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski in a Bucks uniform. I will not be buying Bucks cards, even if Tom Brady cards are a dollar. Actually, if his Bowman rookie card goes down to a dollar, I might buy one. But would you buy a Drew Brees sitting on the sideline frowning card? <laughs> With his arm wrapped up? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, man. It's so sad because he's the best saint to ever play. So, I mean, mm. I love I love the guy, but, you know, it's it's. I think it's time. I think it's but time. He, We'll answer this question, but one thing I got to say with Drew Brees that bothers me is that his 
rookie yard, uh, rookie card in the first two years were in this uh, Chargers jersey, and I don't think of him as Chargers at all. In fact, I don't think of uh, when I think of Saints, I only think of Drew Brees. I think second would be uh, Sean Payton as like an overall person, and then third would be Ricky Williams, who I know bounced around, but. Drew yeah. Brees is hands down saint. And the fact that he even played for another team kind of irritates me, especially on some of those cards that are his most valuable. No, I agree. If, if he was drafted by the Saints and they were all Saints rookie cards, it would be a totally different thing for me. Yeah. It really would. I could uh, I could see his first year Saint card I like being closer in value to his rookie card than a lot of other players, just because of how powerful he is or how like well known he is in the Saints jersey while any other jersey is just crazy. Well when, when people talking about you know buy cards where there's a collector base, I think mm -hmm. that's where that plays in where you could see those 2006 breeze maybe refractors or whatever. I don't mm -hmm. I don't own any of the I own one 2006 tops PSA 10 just a base card of his just because I like the the look of that card it was 25 bucks. Um, but yeah I could see that to where maybe you have like a, a rare refractor from 2006 that's kind of first you know the first saints i could see maybe the you know collector mm. base after those long term all right oh. these vintage 128 i'm going to go ahead and dig into this so i got into top shot early december uh thanks to chris vegas find 777 he shared it with me um he had did a he had done a video on it and i asked him about it. i was like what is that uh the top shot stuff he kind of shared it with me um and at first I was, I wasn't really into it. I, I didn't, you know, think much of it. Um, and I did make a video on this maybe three or four days ago, just talking about my experience, but, um, but it kind of grew on me. It just grew on me. Um, I started to really kind of get hooked, uh, started collecting the moments. And then of course the pricing shot up. And so that, that of course is another element of interest, um, you know, to where it's like, okay, well, this is, you know, I should be paying attention to this. The is it still early question, though, is really hard because it's a brand new space. I mean, it's it's there's mm -hmm. not much to compare it to. You know, you mm -hmm. can't compare it to physical sports cards. It's very different. It's not um, you know, it's it's on the blockchain and people have said, oh, well, Panini's got, you know, blockchain cards, but it's not quite the same. It's not it's got a little bit of a twist on it. And I was watching a really good interview with one of their uh, founders because they had asked that. They said, well, you know, aren't you kind of competing with, with Panini with, with digital cards? And essentially kind of that response was, well, you know, the NBA is very picky who they who they work with. They have a they have an amazing brand and they don't necessarily because the moments are, are different than the digital cards that there is. You know, it's kind of a three dimensional deal. It's a little it's different. Um, you know, Panini doesn't, or I'm sorry, the NBA doesn't necessarily want their, their people, you know, their licensees competing against one another, you know, um, head to head like that. So they're, they're, it's not a digital trading card. It is a little bit different. It's got their own kind of digital spin on it. Um, I think it's worth taking a look at, is it still early? I have no idea. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, if it's the Bitcoin of collectibles, then yeah, I guess it's still early because mm. 2013 a Bitcoin was twenty two dollars, and now what are they? Thirty grand. I'm not saying that that's what Top Shot is. All I'm saying is, is just if it is something that's going to kind of grow in popularity, then yes, is it could be could it be a fad? Yes, it could mm. be. It could be a here today, gone tomorrow thing. We just don't know because there's not enough there's not enough history with it. So that that's kind of my yeah. my take. Tread carefully, tread lightly. Uh, do your research, you know, do all your research on the blockchain stuff, do the research on all of it. Brad, what's, what's kind of your take? I know you haven't gotten into it. Um, you know, what, what's your take on it? Yeah. Chris introduced me to top shot a few months back as well. And I, I looked into it and I just didn't get it I, as in like, cause I'm just, I, I don't even follow crypto. So, I mean, I'm like that far off of what's going on there. I think the idea is fascinating. I think I also think that I don't have to care about it, like it, understand it for other people to like it, care about it, or understand it. Uh, but the track record is not there. So it, just like you said, it's I don't know if it's early or not, but I would say because the, the track record's not there, I see it kind of like a rookie, right? Kind of like, hey, man, this rookie's hot. Is he going to pan out to be uh, the next LeBron James or whatever? Or is it just going to be someone that starts hot and then cools off? And we've seen just so many um, 
fluctuations, so many different peaks and valleys and trends. I mean, like the whole 80s and 90s goats right now, that is like going up crazy right now. And I'm like, well, they went up like crazy after the last dance or, or right before the last dance, Jordan and and Pippen and Shaq and all the 90s greats and some of those guys, Magic, uh, Bird. Well, is that just the wave right now? And I think when you have a longer track record, you could see, all right, it was a wave. It was a high. It Maybe not nearly where it will be, but for the moment, it's, it's very uh, – it's getting a lot of attention. It's getting a lot of hype. And just for those reasons, like like uh, if I'm on Shark Tank, I'd be like, it's getting a lot of attention. It's getting a lot of hype. And for that reason, I'm out. Or you know, for those reasons, I'm out. Which means it could be legit, but it's it's just a bit too sexy right now for me to feel good about. But what I would do is personally, I would revisit it next year, uh, like this time next year, and see where it's at. And and here's the thing: if it's still growing and doing great, there's going to be new moments, and there's going to be players that are dipping. People that I don't really care about this moment anymore because. That was a nice highlight, but he kind of sucks. So just like sports cards, there's going to be fluctuations in each of uh, the players and each of the moments if it really develops into something full blown, just like sports cards. So yeah, it's like if you're getting into cards now, is it too late? No, it's not too late. Is it too early? No, it's not too early. It's, it's the right time to start learning and, and getting in. But I wouldn't have the 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 fear of missing out the FOMO over it at this point. Sure. No, no, no. Yeah, you're right. Um, the one thing I will say just from my own experience, well, first off, the, the website has been up and down. They're in beta. They're still trying to the, the, the amount of traffic that has hit that site mm -hmm. over the last three weeks is like a million percent more than what they had anticipated, what anyone really mm -hmm. had anticipated. So they have had some lags and, and but they're they, they work it out. They're very transparent. They, they come out and tell you it's not like where are you know what's going on? Where where is everyone? They, they are very um you know, forward with the information. Hey, we're going down for maintenance. We just have to work on some things. Um, but the one thing I will tell you is it is it is a very quick and easy uh, buying and selling environment, mm. meaning mm. like I, I wanted to sell off some of my stuff. I sold it all in less than 24 hours, the stuff that I wanted. They have what's called like a lowest asking price for and, and they're all kind of serial numbered. So let's mm. say it's limited edition to 1000 just to use round numbers. They mint each one. So you've got one to 1,000. And then the, the lower the serial number, the higher the price typically, unless it's a jersey number, then that, that gets a premium. So if it's Le mm. LeBron James 23 or whatever, you're going to get a higher, you know, Luca 77, the number 77 is going to have a premium to it. Mm. But that's where the price points are. So it starts at one being the highest and then it goes down to 1,000 being the, you know, the lowest. And so you're able to kind of see if the lowest ask for all of them is 100 bucks. And if you put yours at 90, then you're, you have a good chance of probably selling it. You know, it's not mm -hmm. a guarantee, but you can kind of figure out the, you know, figure out where everything is. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's an experience. I think for the people that really like Starstock, for people that really mm. like Pompsy and they're just looking to get in and out, you know, of, of players and, and, and they enjoy that, yeah. that could be, I think that would be appealing. If you're someone that really likes, you know, I love the physical cards. Everyone knows that watched my channel. I buy a lot of physical cards. So I don't see this replacing physical cards, but you know, it is a, um, you know, for, for those that want the physical card, look at it, hold it, maybe not for them, but if you're, you know, open-minded to, you know, to that sort of thing, it, it's interesting. It's, it's definitely interesting, but you're right. I mean, the, the popularity shot way up over the last three weeks. Pricing has gone with that. So, you know, maybe, you know, maybe wait a year or something and see where it is then, you know, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's just like, if something is new, if something is exciting, if something's getting a lot of attention, I'm automatically turned off of buying. I'm very turned on to selling, right? It just like, whether it's clothes, like, all right, all right, new ripped painted jeans are the new thing. Great. I have an old pair. Let me sell it at the consignment shop. And then put together normal classy looking jeans are now out of date. All right, well, let me buy those for 10 bucks. I'm always just trying to go hard opposite of what oh, it okay. is. That's why like Clay Thompson was such like a, all right, who is really forgotten about? Who is really like, no one is high on right at this moment, but I believe will be in six months. So when this, uh, this wave ends of like excitement or like simmers down to what it's going to be, then when it sustains, then I'll look into it and say, all right, well, what are the strategies? What are people doing? Uh, can I apply what I'm doing with sports cards to this based on what players are 
uh, not doing well, which ones are doing really well. I, I think that'd be fun. I just don't want to put money in something that is artificially inflated because of the hype and excitement and, and novelty of it being new. And I'd rather wait until it is settled down to, okay, this is the amount of people that are in. It's growing at this pace. It's sustainable. Now I feel a lot more confident. Uh, but that just might take another year. Yeah. I, I think where the kind of the, the FOMO comes in is they've already gone, they're already to series two, you know, so the mm -hmm. series one, I think that a lot of people are trying to get into the series one because then there'll be series three, then there'll be series four. And maybe they're looking at it as like 2012 prism, you know, or whatever, you know, and they're, they're looking at that as kind of the first set. Um, and so I think that's, what's kind of, I think that's part of it you know, for sure is just kind of that, you know, are we going to be able to get these prices again type thing? You know, these yeah. they've only made always this. how it is. Yeah, it is. You know, it's it, that that's with everything, you know, it's just going to, is, is the demand going to stay? You know, that's the thing that we just have to see and we'll, we'll find out, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. And I think that it kind of plays into, I think what like a lot of people feel with cards where it's, it's a lot of the emotion, the fear of missing out where it's like, look, will prices ever be like this again versus I, I always look at it as maybe the price on this will never go down. But I believe that as long as I keep learning, there's always going to be opportunity in something, right? There's always going to be some opportunity to get in at a low. I just, it needs to make sense. I have to feel confident. I don't want to be in the in the crowd getting swept into it based on the fear that it this will be the lowest. So for me, I'm like, you know what? If this is the lowest and it only goes up from here, that's great because I'm gonna apply that knowledge to something else that I believe in even more because there's no shortage of opportunities. But I think a lot of people would rather just be like, I don't wanna do the work. I don't wanna be patient. I don't wanna like actually figure this out. I'd rather just hope that this is the, the, the winning ticket. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good point right here. I think vintage is trending, but wants vintage to expand yeah. oh, the yeah. choice to go up. So here's my theory. I think, I mean, so we wait for the basketball season to start. It started. We're what, like a quarter of the way in, 20 games in or something, 25 games mm -hmm. in. And there's not like you have the Lakers and the Clippers that are that are like 14 and five, but all the other teams are kind of like eight and eight, 10 and it's 10. Yeah. So, so there's no one that's really kind of blowing it up. You know, you're not mm -hmm. like looking at the NBA and you're like, oh, that person came out of nowhere and they're doing great. Even Luca, Luca, the expectations on Luca are so high now. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, oh, he had a triple double. Well, that's what he's supposed to do. You know, so, you know, and even Zion, Zion, you know, doing his putting thing. Up good numbers, yeah. He's putting up good numbers, but, you know, it's like, I don't the know. The Pelicans aren't doing that good. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's kind of like people resting, games smushed together. It's kind of like everyone's just vanilla except for you know the, the lakers and clippers is like who the hell's going to emerge from this because if you're i think the heat i saw were six and eleven i'm like all right that's horrible but it's still too early to tell and then you have other teams that are like doing you know mediocre or middle of the, the road you're like well it's still too early to tell if you're gonna be a, a playoff contender or not but go on with your point i've completely interrupted you no no i mean that that's kind of what it is i do think that modern will get the push heading into the playoffs, playoffs yeah. like once we're like 20 games out like once we're like 60 games into the season and it's starting to mm -hmm. take shape like which teams are going to make it in and which you know like which teams are, are doing well i think that there will be a a, a bump there yeah. for sure. Um, i think it's just a weird time i think it's just you have before the season and before the playoffs as the only real times and football what's interesting is that you got one main day per week to see it and then digest it all and basketball you just got a lot of games you have resting you have covid you have like all these dynamics trying to be smushed together and it makes it very difficult to see distinct patterns and, and players emerging so dude, that's why i'm like look i was looking at the the cards uh, on market movers earlier and there were Jordans and Shaqs and Larry Birds, all these cards up 200 or 300% just in the last month. I'm like, dude, I'd be selling because they, they're they great investments long term. But for me, I, I don't see it sustaining at that level. I see like what you're saying where that's that's what's entertaining people right now is getting in on those cards. So have them. And then before the playoff push, that's when... Uh, a lot of these other players or their, their cards will be a lot more relevant. That's what I see that, you know, could be wrong, but that's my thinking at least. Yeah. I bought a couple about a month ago. I bought two PSA nine Larry bird, 86 Fleer stickers. And mm. the reason I did is because 
I'm seeing a case of 86 Fleer on open sell for almost $2 million. Okay. You know, I know that you saw that too, right? Yeah. Well, so I, I think I think it was 86 $1. Fleer dollars for 86 Fleer basketball for a case. Now that's a, that's a, oh, yes, yeah, a case. Right okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And then, um, um, I also saw a box break where it's like a, a, a box of 86 Fleer worth like 300 grand or something was, you know, was that the Vegas Dave one? I think it was him that did it. But my point is, is that like I was thinking about it and I'm watching the, the, them open the box and, and there's some good, they pulled out some good cards, but there wasn't that many, like, like a big hit was the, was the bird PS, you know, the, the, the bird sticker, but it's like, how many of those are going to be nines? There were $300 for a PSA nine. I picked up two and now they've, they've gone bonkers over the last, you know, um, you know, week or two, but, but it's because if you look at like what the, the sealed wax is selling for that they're breaking open, but then, mm -hmm. like, why aren't the cards more expensive? And then you look at 86 Fleer Jordan rookies are a quarter of a million bucks. What does that mean for all the other cards that, that are in there? Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of riding that. I'm not, I'm not saying, like, I'm loading up on Clyde Drexler rookies. I mean, I've talked about I've talked about the players that I'm focused on. But, you know, that's uh, – it's just such an iconic set. And just to see the mm -hmm. price and where it was, it was like, that just seems odd. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's interesting, too, because – I, and that's how I felt when I was doing my video on Mosaic, where I go, you know what? If you have an iconic rookie card like Jordan, or you have uh, uh, Kobe, Topps Chrome, or something like that, I feel like that whole year, every card looks a bit more special. And so even thinking about the Jordan rookie card, I know it's the red, white, and blue surrounding, the little thin yellow trim around there. And every player, I don't know, I, I think gets a little boost of notoriety or or sex appeal or something because it's it's a couple over from michael jordan's rookie card versus if it was just another set if there were a couple other sets that year and it's like yeah okay you're you're from that year but there's not like an anchor card yeah Clyde the glide Clyde the glide yeah i mean there's so many good players there's you know joe dumar's rookie cards and like a psa eight or like a hundred dollars or something you know i mean like there's mm. there's and those are not easy. First off, there's no, you know, if you want to buy packs, you see how much the packs cost of 86 Fleer. That was another reason why I focused on 87 Fleer, 88 Fleer basketball, because if you go online and see how much it is to buy a pack, one pack of that stuff, you know, mm. first off, you can't find it. And then if you do find it, it costs an arm and a leg to get it. But then the cards aren't the cards graded aren't that expensive. Like that just doesn't make any sense. Okay. It's yeah. the possibility. It, you know, you're buying the possibility. It's yeah. like, Hey, it could be a Jordan rookie in here. Like that's it. <laughs> <laughs> mm, juice cake. Mm. Wait, how does that skit go? It's like, I looked in the God's eyes and asked what, or is, and he said, it's the juice ways all. I'll send it to you, Brad. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll had to be it. there. Just had to be there. You had to be there. Had to be there, guys. All right. We're an hour and seven minutes in. I think that we are going to wrap up here in a couple of minutes. Um, if you have any more cre uh, questions for, for Brad, if you haven't checked out his channel yet, I'm sure you probably have, but the Comeback Card Investor is his YouTube channel. Um, pretty average advice overall, but uh, he's a good dude. Yes. I, I rely on my personality and my nice thick hair. Um, that's really saving my ass on this one. Um, but I pretty much watch Dustin's video and I go, this guy knows what he's talking about. How do I say it in a more youthful, aggressive way? And that's what I do. <laughs> oh, wait, I missed one here. Dustin, I see you go more for vintage. How do you feel about fast food franchise cards or collectibles? Hmm. I saw, you know, there's stuff. And, and so from like a nostalgia standpoint, I think there's cool things. I saw like McDonald's Batman cups from like 1989 when uh, the first Batman movie came out with Michael Keaton and they had uh, McDonald's cups of each character. I remember mm. there was that one. Oh, that's awesome. And I those love that. Cool. Now, for as, as an investment, I don't know, like, you know, I have no idea if that stuff, it's, I like the nostalgia of collectibles, but not mm. every collectible is a good investment, you know? So that's kind of the, it depends on how you're asking that question. You know, I like them. I think they're awesome, but if you're buying, yeah. if you're buying them to sell them, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. I mean, cause I remember McDonald's did a lot of stuff with sports and with, uh, with movies. I remember all these kids, yeah. like being a kid, all, it was always like some sort of superhero movie or like, yeah. I don't know if they did anything with Disney, but I, I remember always getting 
all these cups. There were all these like different character cups. I thought, I don't know if it's worth anything or it's just like something that'd be featured on one of those like CNN, the 90s type of um, docu-series. But I, I don't know, man. I feel weird paying a lot of money for anything that says McDonald's or Walmart or Taco Bell or something like that on there. This is a good question. Why do you think the card market was so stagnant for almost 20 years? I can't figure out why it's become so popular in the last year. Will it last? I really do think that it's people that I think the majority of what drives it are the majority. Now, there's people obviously outside of this box, 35 or 32 to 50 years old, I think are the majority of the people driving it because they are junk wax era kids that are now adults that have money. I know you've heard other people talking about it, whether it be Gary V. Um, I know Jeff at Sports Card Investor has talked about it too, but I, I do believe that to be the case. And, and I'm sure, Brad, it's the same for you, but the demographics that watch my channel, it's like 70% 35 to 45 years old, hmm. males. Yeah, so right, that's right in our age group. It's so it's just, we're just, it's the, you know, it's the nostalgia piece. I think that's, that's really, and for it to be okay again, to talk about, and it's cool again. Yeah. You know, like it's accepted. Well, yeah, a couple of things on that, because I can speak to why I got back in and it was listening to Gary V talk about sports cards are on the rise. It's big money. It's different than when you were a kid. And I remember thinking to myself, that sounds way too good to be true because I loved it as a kid, but I don't have the time to spend all, I, yeah, I don't have the free time to put all of my effort into a hobby that's just going to cost me money that I can't really bond with too many others with because, you know, no friends I know now, except for Andy. And obviously I know you guys, but no friends besides that were into it. And then seeing that there's real money, there's real interest, there is a cool factor. I think that's drawing a lot of people in or keeping them in is that sports cards were cool as a kid because I'm 12. And then once I'm 13, it's like, yo, you got to start saving for a car. What are you doing with this crap? You know, yeah. so it's like, oh, shit, I got to get a car, got to take girls on dates, got to do that kind of thing. And so I do, I do think the other piece of the legitimacy, the legitimacy is third party grading. That's really the difference, because mm. I don't think it would be big time if we were arguing about raw cards being a near mint mint. Because when I was and when you were young, you know, we were always like, you know, the card shop would have near mint mint and it'd be a certain price. But there's nobody to to, you know, to say an independent, you know, uh, company to say whether that was true or not. So third party grading is really is really what you know, kind of grew up this hobby for better or worse. I know a lot of people, you know, don't like the grading companies and this and that and whatever, but for it to actually be legitimate to add, you know, to those different price points at different grades are, are also, I think, major in, in, in it. Yeah. And I'd also say that because of social media, we can talk about this so much more. And like I said earlier, talking about cards and players and sports overall makes it so much better. Because if it was just me and my collection and that's all I'm doing, I would not get what I really want from the hobby, which is community, engagement, banter, all that kind of stuff. That's what makes it. And so now we have the technology, we have the grading, we have international. Dude, there's so many people in this community that are Australian and from England and Korea. And I'm like, holy crap, I didn't know any of you guys even knew about sports cards in other countries. I thought it was very American except for soccer cards. And so to hear about all that, I think – there's so many things going for it that could not have existed 20 years ago. Uh, I don't know if it sustained the growth it's had over the last year, but the new level and the new um, the, the nuances with cards now are just way different. So I don't think it'll ever go back to the way it was uh, 20 20 ish years ago. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, guys, we are going to wrap it up. It's been a long week uh, for Brad and I, so we're going to cut. We're not going to do a three-hour marathon, but thank you very much for, uh, for for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. I haven't done a live in a few weeks, so it's good to kind of get back into the swing. Hopefully, we can do another one next week. I'll have Brad on again sometime soon. But Oh, man. I mean, yeah, I mean maybe, happy maybe. to be back. Yeah. <laughs> but, guys, thank you again for joining. Um, have a great weekend. And uh, we will talk to you later. Take care. See you guys. Thanks, Dustin.